the argument from uh, complexity, uh, mm -hmm. what did you call it, the tele something? The teleological argument. That's telos it. is a word meaning design or purpose, yes. That as well as the cosmological argument. They're great arguments for deism, uh, showing that there has to have been some sort of cause. But all it boils down to is an argument from ignorance, which, as you probably well know, is a logical fallacy. Honest answer. Honest. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? Well, I, I have to preface this by saying I would believe it was true if there was evidence for it, but I would not be a Christian. Why not? Welcome back, everybody. The video that we're about to watch almost feels scripted because of the way that this student perfectly repeats the dominant atheistic mantras in response to the alternative explanation. He seems to have so thoroughly taken in the Kool-Aid to have swallowed it completely, hook, line, and sinker, if you'll allow me to connect an idiom to an insinuation that there's something cultish in this dogmatism and narrowness that is on display in this video. With that being said, let's dive in. You're saying, I don't know how this came to be, therefore we're gonna accept this statement. So you really can't be intellectually honest if you're saying from a philosophical standpoint or even a scientific standpoint that this is proof that a God exists because you're simply saying I don't know and then jumping to well okay. it must be this. You're saying that this is a God of the gaps argument. That's what you're trying to say. Uh, okay, exactly. that's, that's not what we're saying. Let me, let me give you just two minutes on this. You see this? I this do. is an amoeba. Something the Darwinists say we all evolved from. And uh, notice An it ancestor does, of the amoeba. Yeah. Now, now notice it doesn't say made by Yahweh or made by natural forces on it, right? Yes. So always the scientist is going to have to make an interpretation. In other words, science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. But this was considered no big deal back in Darwin's day. This was considered to be a blob of protoplasm and... Maybe natural forces could come together and put this together, and through natural selection we could all be here. There's no need for a designer, in other words. Today we know that that's not the case. In fact, inside of this little amoeba is something that clearly has the marks of design. In order to show you this, i got to take you to your breakfast table. How many people in here like alphabet cereal? Let's suppose you want to have a bowl of alphabet cereal. You're a teenager. You come downstairs to have a bowl of alphabet cereal and you see that the cereal's knocked over on the table, and right in the middle of the table, the letters spell, take out the garbage, mom. What are you gonna assume? The cat knocked the box over? Earthquake shook the house? No, you're gonna say that that's intelligent design from an intelligent being, mom. Do we just lack a natural explanation when we see take out the garbage, mom? Or is that positive evidence for an intelligent being? Well, in and of itself, it's not evidence for an intelligent being. We can make the inference because it's a natural process. Um, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What was that? <laughs> we, we can make an inference. We, that, it, you always make inferences. Yes. Are you inferring that an earthquake did this or that mom did this? You're inferring that your mom did this because you have evidence of things like this not happening outside of intelligence. That's exactly the else. point. However, you got it. With the universe, we only have one universe. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Okay, this, okay. I'm just saying okay. that this is evidence of intelligent design, and you agree with that? Sure. Okay. Well, if this is intelligence of, or evidence of an intelligent design, then DNA must be as well. Because you see, DNA is a message like take out the garbage mom, but in a human being, it's three billion letters long. So if something that's what? 15 letters long requires an intelligence, then something 15 billion letters or, or, 13, or 3 billion letters long requires an intelligence. You say, well, maybe it started simpler. Like uh, maybe it started in an amoeba. The problem in an amoeba has a thousand volumes of an encyclopedia worth of information in it. The simplest code is thousands of volumes long. So if take out the garbage mom shows there must be an intelligent being, then it seems to me that a message much longer also requires an intelligent being. And by the way, it's not me who came up with a thousand volumes in a microscopic amoeba. It's Richard Dawkins himself. Okay, so would it be a mom of the gaps argument to say that mom is a good explanation for the information presented in this scenario? And the answer is obviously no. Now, there's more that's coming that's going to connect this because I'm anticipating a potential response to what I've just said here. There's more that's coming but let's first establish that as a foundation. With that being said, let's dive back in. When we infer to design, we are not creating a God of the gaps argument here. We are saying that we have positive evidence for intelligence. 
My only problem here is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Take out the garbage mom isn't all too extraordinary, but an entire universe you're attributing to a creator for which there's no evidence, for which you've said is outside of time, outside of space, doesn't, uh, isn't made of matter. Right. So you're trying to prove what is in its nature unprovable. Okay, so two thoughts here. First is that the goalposts have moved. The original argument has now shifted into a second argument that is also just such a, a well-trodden path. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So fair enough. But what's interesting is that he admits here that a whole universe is far more extraordinary than a single sentence, take out the garbage from mom. So I don't know if he realizes it, but it's almost as if he is implicitly acknowledging the far more extraordinary evidence that exists within the universe than in his sentence, which is the point that he's trying not to make. In other words, he's accidentally batting for the other team here, but there's more still yet to come. We're just laying a few stones to get us to a particular direction. There's more to come. Let's dive back in. Why is it unprovable? We're, we're, we are using spaceless, timeless, immaterial things right now. Like what? The laws of logic. True, but they're conceptual. They are conceptual, but they're not just conceptual. In other words, they would exist even if no humans existed. They in and of themselves are conceptual, but for them to be applied, there has to be uh, a physical being, a physical mind to you know, make the computations and apply the laws of logic. Well, of course, you have to have a mind to apply the laws of logic, but the laws of logic exist even if no minds existed yes. on the earth. But the laws of logic exist even if no minds existed yes. on the earth. Right? So they're not just human conceptions. They are grounded in a mind, you're correct. What mind? The immaterial, spaceless, timeless mind. If space, matter, and time had a beginning, what caused it? I don't know. Well, you can say I don't know, or you can follow the evidence where it leads. Space, time, matter had a beginning, and the being must also be personal to create, to make a choice to create must also be intelligent to put this universe together with such precision, must also be moral because we have the moral law, must also be a creator in order to create from nothing and powerful. Those are the attributes of God. Why wouldn't you just accept that? When you jump to must be personal because we exist. No, 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 not personal because we exist. Personal because, because anything exists. Okay, because he made us the way we are. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Personal to go from a state of nothingness to a state of creation. The being had to make a choice. Gravity doesn't make choices, right? Okay. So a, I'm, I'm a, still a not personal how being it actually lines up logically. It seems like kind of a jump just based on wishful thinking. It all boils down to an argument from ignorance. I don't know. No, 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 no. So it's, this has to be. No, it. no, no. Will, Will, it's not an argument from ignorance. There's positive evidence that a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, moral, personal, intelligent creator exists. That's what we've been given here. Just as much evidence that there's a spaceless, immaterial, flying spaghetti monster that exists. No, 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 because a, the flying spaghetti monster is a being inside the universe, if he exists at all, made of spaghetti. But <laughs> spaghetti by, had a beginning. It's by material. By he's outside of the universe. He simply chooses to appear to us in the form of spaghetti. Well, if, if you, if you want to call the God of the Bible the flying spaghetti monster, be my guest, but you're not going to find it in the scriptures. The point is simply that you can't prove something that's immaterial. You can claim to make these blanket statements and just jump from one claim to another, Will. but it's not proof. Will, Will, what do you mean by proof? Physical proof. What, what does that mean, physical proof? Is the universe not physical? The universe is physical. Okay, well that's physical proof right there. Okay, now this part is really revealing because he's basically saying you can't show me physical proof for a non-physical being, which is true, but there's a huge problem with this way of thinking. This would be like saying there's no evidence for the color red inside the color green, that there's no evidence for three-dimensional objects inside a two-dimensional plane and so on. So to take this one step further now, we all know that things like love, mathematics, and thoughts themselves exist and are not material in nature. So the ship has already sailed in terms of there being a reference for the color yellow or the three-dimensional object to use the analogy that I previously used. So what then is the real problem going on here? And for that, we have to dive into the very end of this interaction. Here we go. Well, yeah. let me ask you a question. Okay. Honest answer. Honest. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? Well, I, I have to preface this by saying I would believe it was true, 
if there was evidence for it, but I would not be a Christian. Why not? I don't believe with uh, I don't believe a lot of the things that the Bible says to be moral. So you have your own moral standard by which you judge the my, Bible. My moral standard is based on empathy, emotion. What would I want them to do to me? Well, Jesus said something like that. That's pretty good. So did Confucius. Yeah, that's that's called the, Aristotle. That's called the the golden, golden rule, rule yeah. which is known even without the Bible. We know yes, that. Geez. Hitler said what would be best is to kill all the undesirables, and that would be best for, for the human race. Did he have the authority to say that? He had the authority to say that, but it doesn't necessarily make him correct. Well, there has to be a standard outside of Hitler and me and you that establishes what is correct then. That's what we mean by God. Okay, so the end of this interaction I really do think is extremely profound because what it brings to light is that the primary obstacle for this young student is actually not evidence. It's not proof. It's actually the fact that his own personal view into the world is held in such high regard that even God himself, if he were to contradict that personal experience, would be shoved to the sidelines. There's a quote by Fyodor Dostoevsky, which gets at what I think is going on here with this student. And this is what the quote says. I think I find this personally to be very profound. It says this, Existentialism isn't so atheistic that it wears itself out showing that God doesn't exist. Rather, it declares that even if God did exist, he would change nothing. You sometimes have these types of moments where in an interaction, the quiet part is said out loud and you understand that it is not a mere intellectual exercise taking place. It really, really isn't primarily about evidence or non-evidence, as has already been displayed in this video. It really is a matter of the heart. So with that being said, let's actually pray for this young man, and let's pray for people who reflect these same attitudes within the comment sections, who believe that God is fundamentally bad and believe that he's not worthy of worship. That is the critical mistake that's being made. It's an over- valuation of the self and an undervaluation of God that leads to a type of arrogance that causes one to reject their own creator and more than that, their own redeemer. But we'll go into that in future videos. With that being said, thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.